I'm Allie. Join me as I create this mountain calling pendant, which also features a nice little necklace and showing how to do the ends for that as well using some beading thread. So make sure you watch through because there's a couple different variations that you can do. Remember, if you need any materials, go ahead and look below the link here. We'll take you to our website. This is actually one of our featured products in our subscription box as well too. So we'll do a link to the subscription there as well. Gather up your materials and let's get started. So to begin our mountains calling pendant, we are going to begin by creating this little star bezel on the back using our Pi Duos. Then we'll flip over to the front and bezel in creating that star as well. I have it as kind of a fun way. You can kind of rotate your cap inside of it if you need to, but I have my mountains to the side just for a different look so I can show you with my mountains facing up. So as we go on this adventure, we are going to start with Pi Duos, two colors of 11 O's and some drop duo beads along with our cabochon. So the first thing you're going to do is add a stop bead to the end of your four feet of thread, and then add a pie duo and three seed beads above. Our pie duo, we're gonna start down at the bottom here where we have the V and we're sewing up through to the top. Come down then the other hole of that pie duo, pull it down next to your stop bead, add one, two, three more beads, and then once again, pick up your next Pi Duo bead. You're gonna do this 10 times total, adding the Pi Duo, three beads on top, bringing your thread and needle down the opposite direction through the hole, and then once again, add your three beads. Go ahead and continue until you have a total of your 10 Pi Duos on your thread. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna add three more 11 O's to link back to that first Pi Duo bead. It is going to sit all different directions. Don't worry about it. We'll make sure that they sit up, down, up, down as we're creating and going into our second step. Once you have 10 units, then you can go ahead and join them together to make them into that rounded circle. To do so, we are going to add three more of our 11 O's just as if we were getting ready to add our next Pi Duo. Go back over to Pi Duo number one after coming out of Pi Duo 10. Move that stop bead out just a little bit and go up through the Pi Duo and come on out. That circles this up into a major mess and we're gonna force the five Pi Duos in and five Pi Duos out. To force five Pi Duos in, I want you to go ahead and go through beads one, two, and three along the top of that pie duo that your thread is currently coming out of. Then we're gonna add an 11 O seed bead, skip the next pie duo in line, go to the next one after that, and once again, sew through those top three beads. Add an 11, skip the next one, sew through the next top three beads. So we're sewing through every other. We have 10 beads that are on when it comes to the pie duos, which is gonna force five of them that we're pulling in together to sit towards the interior, and then five of them will pop out towards the exterior. You can already see that's occurring as I'm getting ready to skip one and grab the next. Those seed beads and the pie duo are kind of coming to the center. We're gonna end up putting on a total of five extra seed beads as we go in and sew, and you can see already that's established here. Make sure you're connecting to all three of your seed beads. Often on the top of the pie duo, your needle will wanna escape after the first two. Make sure to go ahead and go the whole way over through the three. And then add an 11 and sew back through those original three beads that your thread was coming out of. Now this is the back of the pendant. We are gonna get an opportunity to reinforce this star circle here. You can also see this is a fun pendant. If you're not crazy about uh, the mountains or that outdoor kind of theme that we have going on, you can just go in and add some beads on the outside and you have a nice little star there if you wanna add some of your seed beads down on each little corner. What we're going to do is reinforce that center line and then we'll reinforce it one more time as we come back through. So reinforcing that center line there means going back through all of the beads 
that we just sewed through, including that 11 that we've added. Once you're through all of those, the seed beads will sit a little bit more into that circle. And then we're gonna step up towards the exterior pie duos. To step up through the exterior pie duos, I'm gonna go through the seed beads here and let my needle and thread exit right after three seed beads that sit at the bottom of the pie dough. So I'm gonna sew through those three seed beads. Then we're gonna sew up through that pie duo. After we sew up through that pie duo, we are also going to sew up through the three seed beads that sit after going up to the top here, wiggling our thread through that pie duo and then through that outer edge. Pull that stoppy just kind of out of the way towards the back. And here we are ready for our next step. As we go to the next step, we are going to start adding our uh, drop duo beads here. And our little drop duo beads, what we are going to do with those is we are going to string them from the top or the bigger side here. And we are going to let the little side or that kind of they look like a sunflower seed, the point kind of hang down. After coming out through the three beads at the top of the pie duo, your pattern is always going to be the same for five rotations because we're going to do this five times. Two 11 O's, one of your drop duos through the big side, 11 O drop duo, 11 O drop duo, two 11 O's. You can see I switched up the color to that Montana in the interior just for the look of it. I'm gonna take my needle and thread that just like we did in the interior and catch on to those three beads that sit above my pie duo. Sitting above the pie duo then, we're gonna repeat that pattern. Two 11s, drop 11, drop 11, drop two 11s to follow, and then through the next one. That is two out of our rotation of five. And you can see, I usually only want to get those first two beads just because of the little curve. You're gonna have a nice big almost loop around the exterior of the star here. Go ahead and add in your next three sides and then we'll start to get ready to fold it in and get our cab in place to stick in there. Once you're done adding your drops here, I want you to take your needle and thread through those three original beads, through that first grouping here of your beads and bring your needle out through that first or that last rather one of your drop duos. From here we're going to reverse the thread. We're going to take the thread from the first hole of that drop duo and we're going to bounce it up to the second hole. A little bit of thread will be on the outside but because we have that Aztec gold color you really won't see it. I've gone through my pie duo and picked my more purple ones because the metallic mix gives you a whole different color variety. The nice thing is you can kind of pick through there and you have enough extra to do a whole nother piece. From here, I'm gonna add an 11 between each one of my drop duos in that same Montana color, just one, connecting the second holes. And then when I get to my seed beaded area, we're gonna add another one of our pie duos. To add our pie duo, we're gonna add an 11 before it, and then three 11s to top and down. So we're going through that same area where we do an 11 then we're going up through the pie duo from that small side up towards the big side. Go ahead and grab then a silver 11, then your blue, then a silver 11. You can do all the same color too if you want, switching it up a little bit. Go back down through the pie duo, just like we did when we added them originally. And then add one more silver before connecting on to your next grouping of your drops. That'll kind of fold in towards the front, which we want to happen. So again, ready, we've got 11 between our second hole of our drop duos. Then coming out, you want an 11 another one of your pie duos, the pattern of three seed beads on top of the pie duo, down through that second hole of the pie duo, add an 11 seed bead, 
and go on to your next grouping of your drops. So as we connect these, you'll start to see that it's starting to fold in towards the interior. We want that to happen. So after each one of your, of your pie duos here, just make sure to grab a little bit and grab that in. You will start to, by the time you get your fourth pie duo on here, wanna slip in your cabochon into place so they sit right on top. So I'm gonna continue adding that on and making sure as I get to about the fourth one, slide my piece in before adding the fifth and then coming back around to finish. As you finish up adding your fifth one, you can see that I've dropped mine in here. And what we wanna do is tighten it up and reinforce just a tiny little bit. So that way we make sure our mountains stay in there well. So I'm coming out through my last section here of my drops and I'm gonna go up through my first pie duo that I added, through the seed beads along the top, and then down into my next grouping of my drop duos after going through the side beads here. And what that's going to do is just tighten up the thread enough. If you see any gaps in your thread, you will want to kind of pull and tighten that up right at this opportunity. So what I'm gonna do is go through, give a nice tight pull on my thread, not my needle. I don't wanna fray the thread that sits in the needle and just kind of fold these back, looking and making sure I don't see a ton of extra thread. From here, we are going to step up through the 11 through our Pi Duo. It's next in line. We're gonna go through our three seed beads, just like we've been doing. And then once you exit through the silver seed bead, we're gonna create our little star pattern here. To create our star pattern, we're gonna add an additional three 11 O seed beads into the mix here. Get this knot out of here. If you ever pull and you have that little knot, pull it back out and chances are, it's just your thread twisted around itself. It's not actually a knot release it and then pull it back. From here, we're gonna pull this in towards the center. And as we pull this in towards the center, I want you to grab a collection of one, two, and three of your 11 O's. I'm using my uh, blue color. Go into the middle drop duo that's next in line through that first hole. Give a little pull, add three more seed beads, and then up through the three seed beads on the top of the, the Pi Duo. So you can see that the pattern pretty much is three and adding to the top of the Pi Duos here. Go into the next drop, middle drop, top hole. Give a nice tight pull to tighten that up. And then on to the next one. You're gonna continue the whole way around, adding in these beads between each and catching on and really pulling those pie duos in towards the center and finishing the interior of the bale. After finishing your piece here, what you're going to want to do is go ahead and reinforce that interior circle. Just like we did along the back here where we took our thread the whole way through the very interior line of beads, you're doing the same thing on the exterior. I've already done it actually, gone through all of this line of seed beads, gone through that top of the drop again, and gone the whole way around. After doing so, the next time you go through one of your drops, go through the 11 and the third drop duo in line in this section. We're gonna reverse our thread then, just like we did at the start, and we're gonna go through our drop duo here at the top, and we are going to exit right after the drop duo. So mine wanted to go through that seed bead, just kind of sew back out through there. We're gonna add just a tiny little bit of bling, which you catch onto and see just the tiniest little bit on the exterior. To add that bling, we're going to be on the exterior of our drop duos, going towards the middle one. And I want you to add an 11, <coughs> excuse me, an 11, an 11, a two millimeter crystal, which if you don't wanna do this step, you don't have to, or you can use an 80 seed bead as well. Oops. your crystal, and then reverse that silver and blue. 
And then I'm going to sew into the next one of my drop duos, second one over. So I'm going to go in here. Oops, get my needle in here. And sew through. What that's going to do is those seed beads are just going to sit kind of right there, right along the top on the exterior. You can decorate the sides if you want to here, but I like it rather open to get my star shape. And then I'm going to sew through all of those seed beads along the side. So sewing through all of those seed beads along the side then, you're going to come out through that first drop duo towards the seed bead, but not through the seed bead. Again, if it wants to go through the seed bead, just sew back out. Coming out that drop duo there, add, add. 11, 11 crystal, 11, 11, and through the third top of the drop duo. There you go. So you can see that that arch stays. Your crystals just from the front have a little bit of a pop. Go ahead and do the next three corners, adding in your seed beads and your crystal. Once you're done adding your crystals to the outer edge here, you can see that you can kind of pick where you put your bail. Now I'm going to put my bail this time on the middle here above a pie duo. On the previous one, I did it above one of the drop duos and did it more of the triangle one. Changing it up just to see the difference in the look. Coming out the three seed beads above the pie duo, making sure that your cabochon is sitting kind of the way that you want it to do. Add three more seed beads and then go through the three seed beads that your thread is coming out of, starting with your thread going on the opposite direction. That'll lay those three right on top. Go back through the three that we just added. And once again, continue on with another three seed beads. Continue this on here. And it's gonna vary. I'm gonna use the extra seed beads and crystals and everything and just make a cord for this to hang on. But we are going to end up connecting it to the back. So here we're gonna connect it to kind of this baseline here and we're going to make it into a bale. So it depends on what you wanna string it on, how many rows of your stitch you need to do. So in this one, for example, I did a total of eight of my ladder stitch rows. So go ahead on and continue on doing your ladder stitch out of your silver beads for however big you think you need your bail, if you're putting it on an Omega necklace or a leather cord, which it would also look great on, you can certainly do that as well. And have that. If you are a subscription box person, you can also make your um, destination wrap first. And then what that will do is give you some extra beads too that you can choose to use on your necklace. Going in here then, continuing on, and then we are going to pull it towards the back and make that bail. From here then, we're gonna fold it down towards the back. And how I'm going to hold it on here and connect it is a little bit different than I did with the previous one. We're gonna connect it right back to that initial bail, or those initial three beads rather. So right here, I'm gonna sew back through those three beads on top of the pie duo, going in from the right-hand side that my thread is coming out of, and going into the right-hand side of that first row, and then coming back through the beads I just added. And that just makes that bail sit right here at the top, nice and simple. From here, I'm gonna reinforce going through that area one more time. Bringing this down then towards the bottom. Shimmy it through here if you need to. And then bring your thread and needle down towards the bottom, sewing back through the design through your pie duo here towards that inner row, going through the three C beads, wiggling kind of that through, going through the pie duo, and that ends you at the center. 
Once you get to that center then, go ahead and string through the center till you can come up through that pie duo and simply notch your thread ends off. After you knot your threads and thread ends off, you're just gonna burn them down. From there, I'll use the extra beads and I'll show you how I'm gonna use some dragon thread just to create my nice, uh, simple necklace to go on with my pendant. With my extra materials, I've decided to make a nice, just simple uh, necklace for this to go on. And I have a pattern of 10 11 O's followed by my silver 11 O, my two millimeter crystal silver 11 O, just repeated for about 17 inches. From here, I'm gonna grab my wire guard and go through the one hole of the wire guard, down through the other hole of the wire guard, pick up my ring here, let that pop into the interior of that. And now what we're going to do is string our thread the whole way through. If you wanna reinforce your thread, you can go back up through the other side of the wire guard. I'm honestly not gonna worry about it because it's such a lightweight necklace and the dragon thread is really, really strong. So here I'm going in and going through the entire necklace now. So go ahead and bring your thread and needles down the whole way to the other end. We're gonna take off our stop bead and do the same thing on the opposite end, but add our lobster clasp. When you get back down to the end of the necklace, very, very simple, same deal. You're going to, I moved the stop bead out of the way a little bit. Go in, put your wire guard on, up through, down the opposite side of the wire guard. Once you're down that opposite side of the wire guard, that's where you're gonna add your lobster clasp. And I like this for a nice, simple necklace like this. Let that go into the wire guard. And if you have a tight wire guard that you say, oh, it's having trouble fitting on the lobster clasp, you can always uh, push it closed just a tiny little bit. And then once we get to the end here, really, really simple. Take that stop bead off, tie these two thread ends together, and burn off the thread end. Now, depending on your size of the bale, one thing that I like to do with rounded loops on the opposite side of my lobster, like we put that jump, jump ring on, is I like to go in and actually make them oval. That's gonna help it fit better through your pendant if you wanna wear that on. Going in here then, just to, taking your pliers, going in and ovaling it out. You can also do this prior to putting it on if you're struggling to do it. And just make that into an oval, pushing that a little bit, and then it'll fit through the bail of your pendant. When you're working on the piece, changing up the location of the bail, changing up your seed bead colors, maybe using all silver to the front, using more silver in your necklace too, can really change up the design. Remember, you can use any cabochon in here and play around with this netting style of bezel along with our square stitch for our top, finishing off with that basic necklace that you can take on and off your necklace, wearing together separately or even changing up the design creating a different pattern in your just in your work. Thanks so much for joining me for this Mountains Calling pendant and necklace here. It was really fun to use the different shapes to create that bezel. And I can't wait to see everybody's designs in our jewelry making group on Facebook, Beading and Jewelry Making. Remember, if you have not yet subscribed to our boxes and you want to get this kit box, go ahead and check that out in the links below. Hit that little subscribe button for here on YouTube so that way you don't miss anything from us here at Potomac Beads. Thanks so much for watching and stay tuned for more inspirational box designs.